transition metals, their complexes, and magnetic properties. You need to learn these three words. Ferromagnetic, that has the biggest interaction with the magnetic field. Paramagnetic, and then diamagnetic, which has the weakest interaction with the magnetic field. Now, what causes these sorts of magnetism? Well, it's to do with the number of lone electrons in orbitals and to do with the number of paired electrons in orbitals. Let's start off with ferromagnetic. You need to learn that there are three metals that are ferromagnetic, iron, cobalt, and nickel. Iron is 4s2, 3d6. Cobalt is 4s2, 3d7. And nickel is 4s2, 3d8. You also need to use the word domains. These metals form domains. So what's a domain? Well, looking at the one at the bottom left there, that little arrow there showing the domain, that one. If you look closely at all of the nickel in that domain, those electrons are going to be lined up with the domain. Which electrons? The lone electrons, which are responsible for this ferromagnetic property. And so when you put a ferromagnetic material in a magnetic field, it's strongly attracted. Now this stuff is tricky, but I'm going to go through it several different ways. So let's look at the difference between paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials. I've got some transition metals there and some ions also. If there are lone electrons in orbitals, it's going to be paramagnetic. So as I fill out these orbital diagrams, anything with lone electrons is paramagnetic. Now that isn't quite as magnetic as ferromagnetic, but it's still attracted to magnets. Copper plus, that has no lone electrons in orbitals, only has paired electrons, so that's diamagnetic. That's actually slightly repulsive towards magnets. But copper 2 plus, oh, that has one lone electron, and so that is going to be paramagnetic. So let's look at some real world examples. I'm going to bring a magnet close to silver chloride. No, it doesn't seem to be attracted to it. So it can't be ferromagnetic or paramagnetic then if it's not attracted to the magnet. So silver chloride has a plus one charge on its iron. Let me take off that electron there to show silver plus. Yep, only pairs of electrons, so it must be diamagnetic. Manganese 2 chloride. Well, look at that. It's slightly magnetic. Now, let me show you the electronic configuration for the manganese 2 plus iron. Oh, yes, it's got lots of lone electrons there, so it's actually paramagnetic. Cobalt 2 chloride. Yep, that's magnetic too. Let me take off those two electrons to make it the cobalt 2 plus iron. Yep, it's got lone electrons there, it must be paramagnetic. And finally, nickel. Nickel has lone electrons, it's paramagnetic. No, 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 it's ferromagnetic. You have to learn iron, nickel, and cobalt are ferromagnetic. And there are those domains again. And finally, an unpleasant little detail that the IB may ask about. Let's look at these two complexes here. First of all, I want to work out the d orbital for those two iron ions. The first one has an oxidation state of iron of plus two. And the second one also has a plus two oxidation state for iron. All right then. Let me just draw those arrows in the boxes. So you'd think that they would both be paramagnetic because they have lone electrons. They're iron ions. Not iron, iron ions. Iron is ferromagnetic. These are iron ions. Paramagnetic? Oh, that one's diamagnetic. Now up to this very second, you thought that diamagnetic was only paired electrons exclusively paired electrons. So how does that work out? Well, let's look at the spectrochemical series from the IB, copyright IB, table 15. And you can see that fluoride is there, and carbon monoxide is at the very right-hand side, so that's going to give a much bigger split. 
I'm going to put it right up there. So because the energy difference is so big with the carbon monoxide, the electrons can't maintain that very high energy up in those boxes. They're going to come down to the lower boxes. And so actually, the one with the carbon monoxide ligand is diamagnetic because those single electrons go down and pair up with the other single electrons. Tricky, eh? And so some questions, which is the most paramagnetic, which is diamagnetic? So paramagnetic need at least one electron in an orbital on its own. So only scandium is paramagnetic. Which are diamagnetic. Diamagnetic, every electron must be paired in the orbitals. Okay, so scandium 3 plus. Titanium 4 plus, and oh my lord. So we're looking for the nickel here, because we're doing transition metals. So it's a plus 4 oxidation state, which is 3d6. Now that's got lone electrons also. Ah, but it's a super high split. Cyanide gives a very high split. It's high up in the spectrochemical series. So those electrons tumble down to pair up at the bottom. Uh, that's diamagnetic too. Nasty, eh? 